I do. Would you like me to pull that up now? Yes, please. Okay. Will you please continue? Uh, Noah, please. <laughs> See why we need you. <laughs> He's like my man. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. All you. Well, I'm going to be talking to the camera, but I'm also going to be talking to our guests here in the kitchen. Welcome back to Cooking as a Snap. I'm Liz. And I'm Jolene. We're happy to be here this evening with you, making a delicious dinner. On my next slide, oh, you're already ahead of me. Uh, we're going to be doing Welcome back to Cookie Sap. We're going to be doing powerful protein and varying your protein routine. Today's topic about powerful protein and varying your protein is one of uh, the most Amer Americans get the most of is protein, right? Right, because we're always wanting to have protein, even in snacks. I mean, if people are trying to be health conscious, they're thinking, oh, I need more protein, like protein shakes, protein bars. Okay, so we should be selecting foods from a variety of sources when we're having protein, like meat, poultry, seafood, fish, eggs, beans, soy products, nuts, and seeds. So in this session, we'll focus on the benefits of eating a variety of protein from both the animal and plant sources. Next slide, please. Okay, so look at this. There's only one left on the screen. September 14th, I can't even believe it. We started this in March. And here we are, we're, we're written close to the finish line here, September 14th. Exciting. So everyone will receive um, a gift at the end of this uh, next month's session. Uh, they will be um, getting a cookbook, was one of the cookbooks that we used during the last few months that were not included in your original participant pack. Uh, we also will have some prizes in there as well, surprises. <laughs> and then we're gonna be doing another, um, survey of course at the end so we'll be a post survey so we'll, we'll see if anybody's made any changes in their cooking their eating habits their um, activity level and those things are very valuable to us for cooking as a snap also our next series we're going to start another one in october we're hoping and this one is called healthy sets would you go next slide please okay so healthy sense has 12 lessons that focus on five themes making healthy and affordable choices, decreasing food expenses, developing a food spending plan, planning a meal and saving money on healthy food shopping. So look for the registration for Healthy Sense in September. Probably will be in the newspaper and other social media. Next slide, please. The, the part you've all been waiting for, right? This is why we're here. So our cooking channel today will be chicken enchilada bake and apple spinach salad. Next slide, please. We always do the refresher of our work plan. You can't see the slides. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to download Zoom. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. We didn't think of all these things. Like we have guests in here and for them to see our PowerPoint, they can't see it. Well, I'll read them, Mary Lou, we'll just talk. Okay, oops. <laughs> all right, so we always step one, we gotta plan our work, which, you know, everything that happened today, that we have here, or some of you have the meal kits. It didn't happen by accident, it was planned. <laughs> so when we do that, we had to prioritize our work just like you would be doing at home. Uh, you'll collect the tools, which we, we gathered all the tools and equipment that we would need for this class. Uh, for the most part, we always forget something, don't we, Jolene? Oh yeah. Uh, it's mostly it, it, real metal forks. <sighs> it's so frustrating. <laughs> we have to use plastic forks today, sorry. All right, <clears throat> and then, we also collect all the ingredients for the recipe, and then we prep the ingredients, which we have done here ahead of time so that the class goes smooth this evening. And then we set up our workstation. Next slide, please. Ah, the recipes. So even though I have this one, the apple spinach salad, less salad recipe listed first, I really do want to start off with the enchilada bake. So we're going to skip ahead to slide nine. And Jolene has graciously started part of this process. So the first thing we needed was a pound of boneless skinless chicken breast and then a half cup water and the tablespoon chili powder. I'm going to go to the next slide that tells us the directions on slide 10. So the chicken breast was cut into fourths, four chunks. We are doubling this recipe so that we have enough for taste testing, of course, here at the cannery. 
So we will do double everything, but you do what you have at home. If you're going to make it times one, I hope we don't confuse you. So follow the recipe that I sent you in your email. So we have already got it simmering. What did we put in it? Uh, we put water. So we have one cup of water. So we doubled it. And then we put in some chili powder, which we did two tablespoons. Put that would smell that. Yes, perfect. So right now, so we got a head start on that. We didn't have to wait the whole 10 minutes for that to cook. All we did is put that in there in the water with the chili powder and let it simmer. And we turned it a few times because, you know, the side that was in the water with the seasoning got nice and dark. And so we wanted to make sure that flavor was all around on all sides of the chicken. So Jolene is going to take that out and put it in our bowl so that we can shred it. So while she's doing that, we'll talk about some of the other ingredients that are going to go inside. So we can go back to the previous slide, slide nine. Uh, we won't be needing to do that until we put other ingredients in. Okay. All right. So the enchilada bait. All right. So we also have uh, black beans. Now, most of you that got the kit, including you, uh, will have one that's low sodium. Uh, we bought out the shelf. <laughs> so we had to buy a couple that didn't have the low sodium ingredients. So what we did is, I think we've talked about this in other tips, is if you have any canned vegetables, you can rinse them and that will reduce the sodium level 50%. So you can count on that. So that's what we've done here. And we're doubling the recipe. So we're gonna use both cans after, and we're gonna put them in with the shredded chicken. The other ingredient we're gonna add is corn. Now, I thought this was kind of fun. We kind of ran out, we got a few different kinds because they were out of everything. We found this one that actually had little peppers in it. And we thought that would be nice and colorful. And so we got two different brands, like I said, and the recipe does call for one 12 ounce, no, calls for um, the corn is, sorry, the beans, one cup of frozen corn. You can use frozen, you can use canned, or you can use fresh from the gardens if you're harvesting your gardens later this season and you wanna use fresh ingredients by all means, whatever you have at hand and whatever is the best economical choice when you're shopping. So another thing is it said to use a cup. Now I know that like this one looks, you know, obviously smaller. So we're gonna do two cups, but I'm not gonna waste that little bit of corn that's in here. I'm putting it all in there. And that way we can increase, <laughs> oh, <is> that one? <laughs> we can increase our vegetables. So that's another thing you can do. You can modify recipes, whatever to your taste. Mm, it smells so good. It smells great. Yes, so then the next ingredient is gonna be salsa that we'll be adding. I just chose um, a mild salsa because I don't know what everybody's tastes are. Some people like to add, what is that hot sauce that you said you like to add? <laughs> Fat cat? Fat cat hot sauce. That sounds pretty hot. So you can make it however you want. So we chose to do mild. There was a few people that ended up with a medium, but we did ask if they wanted medium. So another thing we have is whole wheat tortillas. If you're not used to using whole grain, whole wheat, um, it is something that a tape for you to get your taste used to. Do Adding it to like recipes that you're going to have like enchiladas is a great way to do it because you're really not going to notice it so much. Um, the texture is going to be a little heavier and also you need to make sure as always when you're having a whole grains and more fiber you drink plenty of water so that it is better for you for your stomach for digestion otherwise you're going to feel bloated. So we will be using that and then we have a non-cook non-stick cooking spray. And then we have some cheddar that we will add. And then I do have sour cream, of course. This is optional, but not for me. We made sure we had that. So you can go, if you go to the next slide again, we will go back to the directions. What do you think? Want to put it back in? Okay. Sure. So it is a little bit, ours is chunkier. If you have a real metal fork, it'll work a lot better when you shred. <laughs> okay, so I'll put my gloves on so I can help. So Caitlin, can they see us or just the recipe? 
So what people should be seeing is the recipe and then you kind of in the corner as big as okay. I can make you. So I, I can right. pull the recipe if you'd rather have. Well, what would, what, would our guests, what would our guests like to see? Um, do they have the recipe at home? Do they want to, to watch the food preparation? This is still a new frontier for us, even though we've been doing <laughs> it for a few months. So let's, yeah, let's take so a Chuck, short, Deb, Lori, short Pat, short Susan, any preference? I can see a big recipe and small cooks. Okay. Would you rather have, be able to see what Liz and Jolene are doing a little better and I can pull the recipe? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, let's try it. Okay. So I'll stop sharing the, all oh, right. Sounds good, Susan. Miigwech. Okay. So I will stop sharing that. And then um, for them to be, let's see. Okay. Should be able to do that. There we go. So it, that should be big for everyone, right? Um, okay. So <laughs> back to you, Liz. No, you are seeing what we're doing. Just like them. <laughs> don't even have to look at the PowerPoint anymore. It doesn't even matter. Okay, so the first ingredient that we were going to add then was the beans and the corn. So I've already rinsed the beans. And you can use the corn. Okay. Yeah, the whole thing has been drained. I drained the corn. You could have rinsed if it was just corn also to reduce the sodium. But I want to take any way that yummy flavor of those little peppers in there and wash them down or anything. Mm -hmm. Just dump it in there. Do you can you use a spatula? Sure. One of our tools that we made sure that we had when we set up. Does anybody remember what that was called when we get everything in its place and set up? Anybody in this room remember what that is? It's French. The weird words. Such as an M. Knees and paws. Knees and paws. <laughs> All right, so we get our beans in there next. We have rinsed those. And you're welcome. You can also substitute a different kind of bean. If you're just looking at what you have in your pantry and you don't have all the ingredients you happen to have, some fresh ingredients from your gardens. Um, use any type of bean in here. All right, so then our next ingredients is salsa. So we're going to use a whole jar. You might want to, if you only received this, you might want to leave a little bit out to top off your enchiladas but we do have another jar here and we're doubling the recipe. So I'm just gonna pour it all in here. You can turn the temperature up on that a little bit now that uh, we got the ingredients back in there. I told I told no, I didn't wanna start a fire. I didn't wanna have the fire station come out to the cannery tonight if we started, uh, if we left everything on too high. We also chose not to use the ovens this evening. Um, we can make this whole recipe, even though it says you can put it in the oven, um, you can make it in a on the skillet um, if you have an electric one or on your stove top as well. You don't have to put it in the oven. There's one step that we'll do in between so that we're able to use that. And our handy assistant is going to wash the pan for us when we're ready for that. Oh, that looks wonderful, that corn in there. What is it that we eat today, uh, Jolene, for the children's garden class? Oh, yes. So we had the tacos. It was um, kale tacos. Yeah, it was garden tacos, delicious. but we didn't use a shell. We actually used the kale leaves. And it sounds like, well, who would eat that? <laughs> it actually was amazing. We had some here today. Did anybody else taste that? We have at least two people in here today that tasted mm -hmm. that. It was amazing. It had one of my favorite ingredients. Do you know what that is? Um, kale. <laughs> was it okay. Cream cheese. Yes, you were very, very observant. It was the cream cheese. And then we mixed that with salsa. Salsa too. That, that was, was great. Delicious. You could use that for a dip. Um, we used a, you know, you could use a, a lower fat cream cheese for that. Um, you could use homemade salsa because I heard there's somebody in this room that makes the best homemade salsa. <laughs> <laughs> It was ah. a rainbow other colors. Yes, for yes. Vegetables. Oh my goodness, there were so many vegetables in that recipe today. Uh, we used zucchini, radishes, uh, red, red cabbage, yellow bell peppers, carrots. It was amazing. Radishes. 
Yep, the radishes gave it a kick. I, I think you could use a little onion, but we were having this recipe in children's setting. And I think that the radishes kind of gave that little bit of a kick that an onion would, uh, but I thought they were fairly mild. And that's kind of been our theme today. We've been doing garden tacos and now we're doing enchilada bake. All right, so what do we need to do now once that's in there? We added the beans and the corn and the salsa. Okay, we're gonna cover it and we're gonna let it heat thoroughly for five more minutes. Okay, awesome. All right. So while we're doing that, we probably could start on our salad. We have some of our ingredients prepped and I know that you have, most of you have your recipe at home. Uh, the apple spinach salad is going to use four cups of spinach leaves and we just use the whole bag. You should have received, if you were receiving a meal kit, a bag. So this ends up being almost seven cups. So if you were doubling it, it would be eight. So we're just gonna double it with the seven cups this evening. And what do we need to put in it next? Okay. So, so what did we do to so after we after it was washed? These didn't need to be washed, but if you had spinach, it was washed. What do we do? We tear so it up, we tear it in the bite-sized pieces next. Yeah, it's a lot easier to eat. It looks nicer when you put the ingredients together. Um, I'm used to just leaving the leaves the way they are in a salad, but this is really nice. Uh, we're going to add um, the canola oil in a separate bowl. Okay, we need a separate bowl so for this. A separate bowl. Mm -hmm. okay. so this is so much smaller to read than on the PowerPoint. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put it back on my screen for myself here. There we go. Okay, so now for the directions, we're gonna, ooh, I do the chicken. Okay, so we're gonna, after we tore the spinach up in a small bowl, we're gonna mix oil, vinegar, sugar, and salt. So we need two and a half tablespoons, or two tablespoons canola oil. So she's going okay. to do four. Okay. That's, no, that's not a tablespoon. Oops, oh, where's, where's your big tablespoon? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of small. <laughs> yeah. right. So four of those. Wonderful. And, ooh, and I know it's a lot of cider vinegar. Has anybody found anything else to do with their cider vinegar when they get this big of a bottle in their kit? <laughs> Pickles. Pickles. Good, good idea. Wonderful. You have the canola. All right. All right. So now we're going to do um, five tablespoons because we doubled it of cider vinegar. Some people drink it also. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be really healthy. Was there a lot of bottles of vinegar at the store? Uh, yeah, really expensive ones too, you know, because we have to try to buy, you know, for our program, um, the small, so we bought mostly smaller ones, but then we had, we didn't buy them all. We didn't buy them all this time. <laughs> Are you going to be using them for canning? Yeah. Well, there's only two bottles. Oh, left on the shelf. Oh boy. Pretty popular. Right. All right, so then the next thing we need, what we're going to put in there is, I think it was the sugar and the salt. So we do have some already started. We're doubling it. So we have it mixed together. Mm -hmm. just to and then it. we're just going to add, we're going to have to measure out some more since we're doing double. We want to make sure we had enough, so we'll need to add another quarter teaspoon of salt. Here we go. Sorry. Oh, I think we already We'll do it Did again. you double it already? Yes, but we'll do it again. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't have to do it again. If you doubled it, okay. just right. to show. <laughs> you don't want to triple it. Yeah. <laughs> it might be tasty, really yummy, though, right? All right. So what do we do with that? So, then we, so we just mix that together, and then okay. we're going to leave it aside, and then we have to cut up our apple and onion. Okay. Wow. Yum. Okay. And it also says we end up putting that in our mixture once it's cut up. So. We are going to need some apples. They've already been washed. And we are going to do, it says one medium. So we'll use, we'll, we want to make sure, let's grab that big one too. Yeah. Just, nice, yeah, we'll use those two for our, doubling our recipe. Okay. And I can't put that. All right, so remember when you're cutting to make the bear claw. And so it's, <laughs> my kids are always telling each other to do it. They see it, the other one doing it without making the bear claw. But this is something, Kids can help with in the kitchen. Once you get it started, if you do that first cup, uh, that cut, 
it's much easier for them. And I always make sure you have the flat side down. I like to use an apple pour. I, I used that for one of our other classes with the children's garden. So I don't like to waste much, but I feel like you do unless you pour it. So what kind of apples would you put in your salad if you didn't, like we chose these ones, the store, they were the Granny Smith. What other some kind of apples would you like? But want to put in the chat or anybody here? What kind of apples would you like? Do you have? Is anybody have an apple tree? Do they have? Mm -hmm. What kind of apples do you have? Do you know what they are? Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's what we we're using. Do they get uh, fairly large? Do they? Wow. You want to check on your mixture there, stir it, and then get it put into the silver bowl. Mm -hmm. Yep. So while I'm cutting up the apples, we're really multitasking tonight. <laughs> we'll have Jolene get that mixture out of there. We'll get that turned off so that uh, our super candy assistant can wash that pan without burning himself too bad. <laughs> we're so glad to have such a nice facility here to use and great people. All right, have, have all of my participants on the video, have you had a chance to take a tour of the cannery yet? Um, if you have, um, you know, thumbs up or in the chat. Um, if that's something you haven't done yet, would you be interested in doing that? Maybe we could do that for our last class or something. I just like throwing all those ideas out there. Want hot pads? No. Yeah. I, I think I have some in my kit. Oh, you have some super big ones. There. Yeah. Does anybody have a chopper? I like using the choppers. But I think it would make my apples too mushed up. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Is anybody cooking along with us tonight? Is Pat talking? I can't hear Pat. Pat is unmuted. I'm not sure if Pat's going <laughs> to speak up or not. <laughs> Okay, I just thought I could, I thought maybe it was my speaker. Yeah, we can't hear you, Pat, you're signing, so try the chat if you meant to unmute. <laughs> so, Kayla, did anybody have any uh, favorite apples? I see Sue just goes for any apples fresh from the tree, are great for cooking or baking with. And then uh, she's also loving the cannery. Would love to have the same setup in her home. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> what did we all? <laughs> uh, someone mentioned this evening that they wish this was their kitchen, and I yeah. said it is their kitchen. <laughs> there you go. But you do have to bring everything you need, <laughs> which is a lot of work. So I'm thankful to all the people that help put this together. <laughs> so that we're able to do this. All right, so I'm gonna put the apple in also. And here, to soak in the mixture. Ooh, yeah. Do you have a spatula that you can use? Oh, how about the tongs? Let's use the tongs. All right, so I'll get that in there, and then I'm gonna let Jolie cut up the onion. It's so kind. This is a beautiful red onion. Okay. And then I'm going to put in our cravings as well. The recipe called for a quarter cup. So we're going to put a half cup. And so if I use this, it would be over a cup. So I'm going to use most of this. 
You could sprinkle some on top afterwards too, but I want this to soak up that mixture that we have in here. Mm -hmm. If you uh, put even raisins in it and um, liquid, it, it reconstitutes it. It soaks up the juices. So it's going to get the flavor of the sugar in there and the salt and the vinegar. And then how much onion are we using for the recipe? Uh, it said one red, red, um, cups of red onions. Well, you have cups of You don't need all of it. So, yeah, you might cry. <laughs> It's a little juice. Yes. Yeah, it's a pretty color though. It is very, it is very pretty. Okay, so as you're doing that, okay, we'll look back at, and then we're gonna put the, you could have put raisins in this, it says optional, but we've had raisins in some of our, our previous recipes. Okay. So I think that we're gonna get back to, Let's get that in there and get back to our enchiladas. So I'm gonna grab another one of these because I'm gonna need one of those to make the enchiladas on. I'll be right back. Just gonna add the onions in. I've got a question about the apples. <clears throat> I'm just wondering what if you spiraled them instead of spent all that time chopping. Right, it did seem like, uh, I'm not a fast chopper, I'm scared I'm gonna cut my fingers off. So <laughs> oh. we're master chefs or something, we could get that cut up fast, but yes. Um, I had suggested also using like an apple core. I think it's easier, faster to cut it with that. I have one that you can use also to slice the apples, but even then you still have to do some more cutting. Um, yeah. Does anybody have like a uh, food processor? Have you ever used that for cutting up apples? Is there a setting on those that doesn't make them all mushy? You know, just got to do it there with the knife. Well, that looks great. We'll just let that sit aside for a little while. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start. You want to read the, what we do with the enchiladas? So mix, let's see the spread the half a cup of the chicken half a mixture. Cup? So do you have a half cup measuring yeah. cup I can use? From our kit there, yep. So I actually can, we have a spoon here that I think is a pretty good size. Yep, so we're gonna use this. If you're in your kitchen, um, it's pretty close. It'll be rounded and it'll be easier, I think, to uh, scoop it in there. I can kind of stir it up a little too. It's nice and hot. We can put the chicken mixture down the center of each tortilla. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's nice and hearty and rich. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to roll up and place seam side down in a greased nine by dish. Nine by thirteen. Yep. Do you want to take that and plug that back in? Mm -hmm. Then you wash nice and clean and then i'm pretty sure when it's in greased we're going to use this right I'll put that on low for now so we're not... all right so rolling it up hmm how should we roll this up does it give us instructions on how to roll it up um let's see. so it says roll up and place seam side down so in grease, nine by there 13 we go. inch pan. It's gonna kind of pull it towards the center a little bit. <laughs> and looks nice. So we'll get one started in here. How many am I doing according to this recipe? This recipe, eight. 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 So we'll do maybe we'll do eight as many. I'll make as many as I can fit in this pan. Uh -huh. okay. So each kit has. Eight. All right. It's very good. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so as we're working on this, I'll go ahead and have the PowerPoint back up, Caitlin, and I will go on with our lesson. Okay. okay. Oh, sure. Okay. Is it on? And we'll go to slide number 11. 
Ooh, this is a good topic. All right. There's no such thing as stomach flu. Oh, it's kind of a scary face there. I think it's a germ. It's usually the neurovirus, the most common cause of short-term diarrhea and vomiting. Yuck. Neurovirus is, I'm sorry, this is a really gross lesson. It's the poop and vomit of people who are sick. If the virus gets into your mouth, you can get sick too. Let's talk about why that happens. Okay, so we usually do an in-person class. We play a little game right now. We have a rubber chicken. <laughs> and what we have usually do with that rubber chicken in advance before the class, we put some super secret ingredient on it. It's called glow germ. And so we touch it all over it and you can't really see it on there. And then we kind of play a game. We toss this chicken around. And then afterwards we get out a black light and then everybody gets to see their hands and their hands will show that they're just covered with all these germs possibly could have been really serious germs. Um, it's also really interesting to do this type of um, thing when you wash your hands and see if you really did get everything off your hands because you'd be surprised at how much is left behind. Especially depending on the texture of your skin. And if some people like have really soft skin or they have more callous skin, they work in the gardens. Um, like I have eczema, so I have lots of like five tiny little cracks on my skin. And so stuff like that, I was like, oh my gosh, it doesn't come out unless you really take time to wash your hands. So next slide, please. Okay, so from your food, we'll look at this. It shows a picture of somebody that's probably, who's gonna be fixing your food, you know, bowing over the toilet because they probably are ill and they've been vomiting. And then it shows they go back to work, they put their apron on, their hat, and they're fixing food and they and they serve it. And it could be at a restaurant, it could be in your own home, right? So it says 12 to 48 hours. Then it shows the red person that, okay, it was a yellow person, you know, dick person making the food. The person in red ate it. 12 to 48 hours later, the same thing happens to them. So they can get sick. So from your friends and things you touch, you need to be careful and protect them. So the virus can be spread for days after you are feeling better also. So always wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water after using the bathroom or before preparing food. Do not prepare food for others until you have felt better for at least 24 hours. So I just love that we do share that with the general public because in food service <laughs> or people that had to take the training uh, for uh, serving food, making food and working in uh, public health, you hear this all the time. It's, it's really stuck in your head. <laughs> so it's hard to go out to eat and, and see things happen sometimes because you know what could happen. So it's a really good lesson. Next slide, please. Okay, so again, we reiterate, always wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water after using the bathroom and preparing your food and do not prepare any food for others until you have felt better for at least 24 hours. It sounds so redundant. But in food service, when you work like with uh, youth, like at schools, um, food service staff are trained and they actually get trained and they get retrained and they get reminded. Like some of them do a, a monthly training. They do a hand wash training. It sounds so simple. You think kids know how to wash their hands. <laughs> but we just need to remind ourselves to do that. And there's some people have some tips to do that. Um, they might sing a song or they might come to 20. Um, a happy birthday song, the ABCs, whichever ver version of a song, as long as the verses in your head or out loud. I've taught hockey players to do this for serving for a spaghetti dinner, and I had them all singing the happy birthday song, and they thought it was pretty fun. So, <laughs> but anyways, uh, it's a good reminder. So then on our next page, we're going to talk about portions, right? So the portions is really interesting because so many times, especially like at restaurants. Uh, we, we think that, oh, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm going to, you know, order this or that. And most of the time we're going to be full, but the calorie counts and the ingredients that are listed, it's going to tell you, I think most restaurants have it now because it was supposed to go into law in like 2017 to 2020, uh, that it would be posted at restaurants, how many calories are in a meal. And if you are like on an average of 1400 calorie diet, that 1,400, 2,000 calorie diet, 
Um, you can see how just going to Perkins for lunch, <laughs> we won't say who did that. Uh, <clears throat> you can do half your daily calories at one meal. So <clears throat> we're going to do some examples here with some of the props that I have, but I'll read these first. It says, what is a serving? It says three ounces of meat is about the size and thickness of a deck of playing cards. Oh, I just happen to have some here. Look at that. So about the palm of your hand. Okay, another thing. Your mouse, if you work at the computer, that is a three ounce serving of meat. Great. And then a medium apple or peach. Well, we just saw that in our recipe. We're not using this one. This is kind of a small one even. Okay. And then it's be about the size of a baseball. Well, those are ways to think of what a serving size of fruit is. Okay. And on the next slide, please. We have one and a half ounces of cheese is about the size of two dice or an entire thumb from the tip to the base. I also have an example here of one ounce of cheese. If you were gonna cut it in cubes, that's one ounce. So if you cut a couple of smaller ones, I could see that probably would be more like one, um, one and a half to two. So even the cheese sticks that you buy in the store, uh, look at the sizes, what they are. And you know what size you're having. And then a cup of potatoes, rice or pasta is about the size of a tennis ball. So if you're eating a real size serving, <laughs> A pasta. How many of you ever get this on your plate at like all Garden? <laughs> or you dish it up at home, let's be honest. Well, sometimes uh, my, in my experience, when kids go through the line at school <laughs> and they're served a real, you know, nutritional meal that is supposed to meet their daily, you know, daily needs, uh, they think, oh, that's not very much. <laughs> but a serving size of pasta or rice um, would be about the size of a tennis ball. Another thing is um, a CD or DVD. I don't know, kids even know what CD is when I teach this in school, but uh, most of them still do. Um, this would be like a slice of bread or a pancake. That would be an actual serving size, not those big, huge ones that you get when you go out for breakfast. Okay. And then, oh, this one is kind of cool. I have a, a little plastic nickel here. The nickel is supposed to be Make sure I read this right. Okay, two ounces of dry spaghetti, a cup cooked spaghetti. Okay, so when the spaghetti is dry and you're going to put it in, in a pan of boiling water, if you were just measuring what one, one serving would be, the diameter would be only this much. I just go by the box. Like if there's six of us eating, it says six servings. I throw it in. I don't really think about that much. That looks so small. <laughs> And then a matchbook. Let's see what the matchbook is. So I have here a matchbook, which would be your equivalent of a tablespoon of oil, salad dressing, or mayonnaise. So one serving is this. Now, when you even go to fast food restaurants and they give you a little cup of ranch dressing, it's not that small, is it? I mean, it's that small. I mean, it's usually <laughs> it's usually at least that big, <laughs> right? Probably way bigger than that. So what do we, oh, let's go back to Jolene now. Um, we can take the PowerPoint down. Jolene has got these lovely enchiladas in the pan. And the next thing we need to do is add something to that. So I'll move my playing cards away from here. <laughs> okay, so Jolene, you put them in there, in the pan. Yeah, and the leftover sauce, we're going to put what is ever left over. You can use the pan, the spatula or spoon. Yep. And we're going to put the leftover mixture across the top evenly, just a little bit here, a little bit there. And then we're going to also add the cheese. The glasses are really fogging up. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to put the cheese on top. And this called for how much cheese? This says we have eight servings, so I think this is about perfect. We'll just evenly spread this across the top. Do you have that on like low or? Okay. Just want to get that heat going in there. We want that cheese to melt. If you're going to do this in the oven, that would be nice too. Oh, that looks good. And you can use a spatula to spread the cheese more evenly. I think we need to push 
I'm um, sorry. Let's push, push this one down so we can put the lid on. Yeah. All right. So once we get that in, we'll get the cover on it. We'll get that going. And let's see, 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna leave that in there for about 10 minutes. We could have heated it up and then added the cheese, but we're just putting it all in at one time. All right, so while that's heating up, uh, I will clear this stuff away and we'll work on the salad. So do you wanna read what happens to the salad? I'll clean up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oops. We had that mixture sitting, remember? So soak it up. Yes, so we added the apple, onion, and dried oh, dried fruit to the mm -hmm. mixture. Yep. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And then we um, tossed to coat the apples, and then we let it uh, stand for about 10 minutes. And now we're going to combine the ingredients together in a large bowl of spinach, and then we will serve it. So we're going to add it all, all these colors and flavors. Okay, so toss. I bet this would even taste better if you refrigerated it for a while. Let it sit, all those flavors together. Um, I wouldn't have it sit overnight. Spinach is going to get really soggy and limp, but you could put it in the fridge until you were going to serve this for dinner or lunch or, or your picnic. Okay. So we get all those. We're going to let that stand now until we're ready to serve it with our enchiladas. So we'll set that aside. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint and we're going to look at what's the next one. Ooh, slide number 16, please, Caitlin. And you want to just kind of tidy up a little bit and then we'll just start serving. Where are we at? Oh, right on time. It's about that time we eat every time but quarter after. So we'll just clean all this stuff up for our in person guests today. All right, so back to our portions. We're also going to look at a cup of broccoli or raw vegetable. It's about the size of a light bulb or your closed fist, right? depending on how big the person you are. Maybe a big guy with big fists might be a little different, but he, he can eat a bigger serving of broccoli probably too. Okay, so then a teaspoon of butter, like we talked about, like um, that little match book also could be like the size of the tip of your thumb. So you can remember that the whole tip of your thumb to the knuckle to the first joint. And then an ounce of nuts or small candies equals one handful. <laughs> I don't know who's seen that commercial, but a handful of, what is it, uh, goldfish crackers. There's a, um, some sports figure who's very, very tall and very large, and he's got like this big heap of handful. So that's not what it means. <laughs> so about the size of a handful. Okay. And then on the next slide, we will go to um, we could just open it up to talk about um, last month. Did we? Did you try the barbecued chicken? Did you make the barbecued chicken? No, the pulled chicken. Okay, and the Brussels sprouts, apple straw, slaw, not apple straw. We, well, we did here, obviously. We thought um, somebody said that they added hot. Oh yeah, with hot sauce. What's that called? Fat cat. Fat cat hot sauce. So you could have obviously made that uh, more spicy. Did anybody else try it? Do you want to put it in the chat? Do you want to share? Um, did you try anything different because of what we did last month? Uh, and our and our lessons, what we've been talking about. Um, did any of you think about my plate more when you're looking at your serving your, up your food and you're plating your food? Okay, we can take the um, PowerPoint down, put it back on the camera. I'm going to uh, help dish up some of this yumminess. I'd love to see some pictures of what you've made today. Feel free to email them or share them now if you have something ready. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Five, six of us. I think we need some like background music or something. Mm -hmm. Does anybody got anything they want to share? 
I mean, Chuck was talking about um, starting up a song, I think. So <laughs> I like that. Trying that 20 second hand washing song. <laughs> um okay so sue says a few sessions ago you asked about suggestions on things to make is there a way to make a healthy fry bread oh good question um okay so how many people would say that fry bread is traditional or is not traditional i think it is a tradition that's a good way of putting people do like eating it. Um, I would, my suggestion would be is, <laughs> it's a sometimes food. Don't deny yourself food. Uh, we don't teach that. Um, for healthy eating, we teach just to make good choices. Um, foods that are sometimes every time, everyday food, sometimes food, and not so often food, you know? So I think go slow and whoa is one of the sayings that we use. So go, if it's a food that's really good for you, like something we made today that um, has all the healthy options and making it low or fat and less sugar um, using half fruits and vegetables, that would be a go food. You could have that anytime. A slow food, maybe you would have something more like um, some of your, like we're preparing, like today, if we had something more like this where we did steak or, or um, pork and other foods in there, and had more um, foods that are eh, maybe not considered as healthy, but the foods that are like, whoa, <laughs> that would probably be anything that's fried with sauces, um, gravies, things like that would be more of a once in a while food. Does that answer your question? Um, I like that, go slow, and what was the other one, whoa? Whoa, yeah, like a horse, whoa. Really, because you know, um, we, Food, I mean, food isn't just to give us nourishment. We enjoy it. It's part of our everyday life with our families, um, celebrations, and to deny, try to deny yourself of, like, you think everything's bad for you. Well, it's not that it's all bad for you. It's just that it's in moderation or the portion size that you have. Um, you could have a smaller portion. You could share fried bread tacos <laughs> with somebody you love <laughs> and then have a side salad with it. I know if I let my 12 year old serve himself up tacos, there wouldn't be anything but meat and cheese in it. But I always put all the fixings out and I kind of model how I want to do it. I wanted to do it and they do pretty good, but yeah. Hey, I wanted so. to show you what uh, the plate looks like. Completed project yeah. here, kind of as you can oh, see it. That's, that would be great. Ooh, that looks good. Chuck's showing I it up on the camera. Yeah. yeah. I had a lot of help here. My daughter made you. this, and uh, my wife made this, what and now I'm going to eat it. Oh, oh thank so, you. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Show one more okay. time, Chuck, so we can see it. I, I don't want to look do it. I'm dumping on my computer here. Yeah. Good work. <laughs> yes, one, that two. Sorry, yep. you want to some oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got some of this that is <laughs> Let's see our enchiladas are getting nice and hot. I'd like our cheese to melt just a little bit more. So you just want to put the cover on just for a little longer. So that besides there's not enough room on these plates for an enchilada yeah. and the salad. <laughs> still pretty good. Yes. All right. So did, so did anybody else um, have any um, comments or surprise? Were they surprised about what portion sizes look like? That's always um, to, when you hear some things the first time. I think it's kind of a shock. Like I never thought of that. Um, what do you think? Who's you? Uh, th this is Marsha. I hi, just Marcia. I'm here now, and I was supposed to pick up my kit this afternoon. And I missed it. I'm wondering if you still have one left that I could pick up tomorrow. Oh, they're gone. We don't. We get rid of them the same day because when oh. we've done that in the past, they get spoiled, and Dude, you can't guarantee. Been, it was so busy. This was the one thing I really wanted to make. I missed everything. Well, I hope that you're able to make it in the future. It, I, unfortunately, we try so hard to make sure all these get uh, delivered. Yeah, and and I just. I had too many people that are working on thing projects over here surprised me at various times during the day. So sorry, I missed it. Well, thank you for letting us know. 
Okay, yeah, um, we are going to we're going to pass out the salad here. If anybody doesn't have anything else, we are kind of done a little early. And unless anybody else wants to share, let's see what a, let's see what our enchilada looks like. I'll play it up in the enchilada. I'll take one. I know. We, I wish I had the full size plates. <laughs> I'm going to cut one in half just for fun. Mm -hmm. I'll put some sour cream on it. Yes. How, how helpful that is. <laughs> oh, I got to do this. It's too hard. Oh, I think I can get the whole thing on now. Kind of hard to get them apart. <laughs> They're so cheesy. And then we have a smaller plate, so I kind of cut it in half. Yeah, I think it'll fit. Okay, we'll do a dollop of sour cream. And I think that I do have more salsa down there if you want to grab a spoon in case somebody wants some of that. Um, would you like sour cream and salsa on yours? Okay. Let's um, use a fork. Yeah, that's kind of big. A little stir. Yeah, not, not on side of it. Pretty. All right. So here we go. We're about to start our taste test here. I hope everybody enjoys theirs. And I hope to see you again next month. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Enjoy. Kaylin. Yeah, miigwech, Liz and Jolene. It was so good to be back and to see some people virtually and hear some people in person. I hope you all had a good time. Um, I also, since you have a couple of minutes, I was going to say at the, the cannery, we're looking for a supervisor to run the cannery and get it all established. Um, so if any of you all know anyone that really wants to get in and help some food producers, tribal food producers, and people who are growing food for their family, preserving food for their family, there's a job open right now. And the, the position for agricultural division director was just posted too. So that's another big opportunity to get tribal food sovereignty going um, for continuing it here at Fond du Lac. So, all right, well, let everyone go. Miigwech, everybody. Big <laughs>